So I need to select a club from this drop down. With Python, I need to click here and then this drop down will open. So let's find out what element this is. This is going to be, this is the input field. And then there's a span here. So I'm going to use the span. And I'm going to find this element. Okay. So what I can do, I can search for span with the class select to selection. So select site equal to WD, WB dot find element by XPath. And I'm going to pass in the reference to a span. So I'm looking for any span in the HTML. And then I'm going to use some queries here. This is going to be a bit more complicated. So I'm going to search for a span containing a CSS class. And the CSS class is going to be this one here. It has more than one CSS class. That's why I'm using contains to make sure that I search for this bit. Okay. So this should give me a span. And hopefully I should be able to click on it. So let's see, you can see it works. If I click on it again, what happens? It will disappear. So if this dropdown is already showing, and I just run this, it will disappear again. Okay, but there is something interesting that happens every time I change here. So you see area expand equal to false. If I trigger again the dropdown to show up, can see this attribute here, area expand equal to true. What we can do, we check for this attribute. If this attribute is set to false, then we can click on the element. And if it's set to false, we just ignore it. So let's do that. So I'm just going to get is expanded equal to select side. And I'm going to get the attribute area expanded okay and then this is going to be a boolean so i'm going to compare this because this is returning a string we can check yeah it returns a string I want to turn it into a boolean. So I'm going to do equal equals true. So in this case, it's actually set to true, which means the dropdown is already showing. So I'm going to save that in a variable is expanded. And then I can do an if statement. If is expanded, in this case, if not is expanded then I can do a click. Okay, so let's try that. You can see the drop down is showing up. So let's make sure it, it gets deselected. And let's run this code again. So you can see the drop down is expanded. Okay, now what we need to do is select the club we want. So I'm going to select Eref in this case. So to select EREF, I need to make sure that I select the right category here. What we can see is that this is a list of elements and we have allies. So for each club, we have an ally. So what we have to do is to find an ally tag with the name that we want. Okay. So this is what I need to do. So I'm going to write some code 
I mean, it's just deselect everything. So, so an element by xpath again, and you have li, and then you can specify text. So I'm searching on the text attribute of for the li, so the value itself, and I'm going to check for anything with the name, for example, eref. Okay, and then. I will click on it. Okay, so let's see. I have the drop down here and I click this. Didn't work. I think I have some uh, syntax error. I didn't close my string. Now let's try again. Okay, worked now. You see, Erif is selected. So I can select the club. Okay. And now the activity in this case is going to be racket sports. So I'm just going to check what I need to do. Seems like the easiest is just to, to look for this attribute here. Yeah. So I'm going to select racket sports via this attribute. So XPath again. Okay, so I'm, let's select the activity. So WB find element by XPath. So this is an input type of radio. And then there's an ID here, which I'm going to use data test ID. And this is going to allow me to search for, for this uh, radio button and uh, I can click on it via that. And I'm, go I'm going to pass in input and I'm going to search based on the type, which is going to be in this case, radio. Okay. And then, and, and then data. data test ID equal to booking. Okay, I need to copy that string because it's a bit long. Yeah, and I'm going to search for that. Make sure the single quotes are there. And then I will close the, I've closed the square brackets and then Okay, so now I have the element, it can find it, and I'm just going to click on it. See if it works. Yeah, it works. Okay, so now what we have is a checkbox that I need to click. So I want to select this checkbox. And this checkbox also has an input. So input type equal checkbox, and then we have a data test ID here. And I'm going to copy it now. I made a mistake in naming all the sections. Now I'm going to select the activity. WB dot find element by XPath. Again, our friend. This method is very, very useful and very important. So you need to learn XPath because it's really uh, used a lot. So I'm going to search now for input of type equal to checkbox and an attribute which I've copied beforehand and it's going to be badminton for 60 minutes. Okay. And now I'll close the brackets. I think that's it. Okay. I didn't close the string. Okay. So it can find the element and I'll just click on it. Okay. Yeah, let me just un untick it again just to see if it works. Yeah, it works. Okay. And now the next thing I need to do is to view the timetable. Okay. And to view the timetable should be fairly straightforward. I just have to click on this button. So I have a button here. It has a test ID, so I probably can use that. I'm going to search for a button with this test ID. So WB find element by XPath. And I'm searching for a button with a type 
not null type in this case. So it's going to be data test ID equal to, let me search for it. So this one, bookings view timetable. And then I'll close it and then I'll click on it. Okay. And now I can see uh, the timetable, which for today, it's already, uh, there's nothing to book anymore, but tomorrow there's, uh, there's more things available. Okay. So the next step is to click on the dates that we want and then find all the entries, what's available, what's not. And I'm going to parse this information into a table in Pandas. Yeah.